Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone out this morning as we continue meeting under some special circumstances. Um, these circumstances, unfortunately, will continue until the situation changes, uh, hopefully for the better, but if it should change for the worse, uh, things start to look bad as far as the spread of the COVID virus. Again, there's always a chance uh, we may even have to stop these gatherings. So uh, please keep that in mind for the time being. We continue to or intend to continue uh, just the way we are. And I thank you all for your cooperation with the masks and the social distancing, etc. Again, there are no prayer request cards in the pew racks. So if you would like to request prayers for others, you can uh, say those names out loud if we share the prayers of the church. Or if you'd like to have an added prayer chain, uh, contact the office sometime during the week and we'll see that happens. Also, no kneeling. Um, so we will uh, be standing for the prayers and for the confession. Communion distribution will be as it has been. I will come down with the host. I will place the host in your hand. As I walk away, you can remove your mask and then uh, take your host. Um, there is a mistake in the bullet, a small mistake. Um, the flowers that are listed as being from Shirley Johns and Wendy of her mother are actually supposed to be next week. Um, the flowers this week are in honor of Lorraine Merritt, who had a birthday on Friday. And so to uh, celebrate her birthday and thank her for all the great work she's doing in the office, the uh, older flowers are in honor of Lorraine this week. Uh, speaking of next week, I will be on vacation, uh, starting in about an hour. Um, and so uh, I'll be out of the office. Um, the office will still be open, the rain will be there. There will be no Bible study on Wednesday. And next Sunday, uh, the pulpit will be filled with our very own and very capable Troy Spencer. Uh, so we thank Troy for being here to do that for us next week. And then finally, some special notes on our prelude this morning. Joyce has some special information for us. Um, the prelude is actually a choir anthem by John Rutter. The words give praise to God's marvelous creation. And I think as we look around us, we do recognize that even in these uncertain times, there is a lot in creation for us to praise and be thankful for. A couple of the verses of that song are Look at the world, everything all around us. Look at the world and marvel every day. Look at the world, so many joys and wonders, so many miracles along the way. Praise to thee, O Lord, for all creation. Give us thankful hearts that we may see all the gifts we share and every blessing. All things come of thee. Let us prepare for worship.
Please stand and we do any confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your members, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin, thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. So that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have a peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory be to God in heaven, peace and goodwill to all the earth. Mighty God of all creation, Father of surpassing worth, we exalt you, we adore you, we lift high our thanks and praise. Saints and angels bow before you. Here on earth, our song we raise. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all people. The prophets who preceded you from me and from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thank we will read the song in unison. Your love, O oh Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in heavens. I am made in heaven. I am sworn in oath to David, my servant. I will establish your mind forever and preserve. 
The second reading is from Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. Were you slaves of sins, slaves of sin, and were free in regard to righteousness? So now, so what advantage did you then get from the things for which you are now ashamed? The end of those is death, but now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Peter God. I'd like you to stand as you're able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace this morning from God the Father and the Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, it seems that we can hardly start a conversation these days without stirring up some kind of controversy or even conflict. You know, we talk about politics, we get into debates over Democrat versus Republican, conservative versus liberal, and whatever people perceive all those labels to be. We try to talk about the pandemic that we hear so much about today. And we have these debates over wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Keep your distance, don't worry about your distance. Open your doors, keep your doors closed. Even people debating whether or not there really is a pandemic. We have racial issues and other prejudices in this country that have been going on for far too long. You know, I've been reading a book by Tom Brokaw titled Boom, and it's his uh, memoirs of the 60s and his news reporting during those uh, years of civil unrest in uh, the mid to late 60s and early 70s. And he talks about civil rights issues that sound like they could have been taken right out of this morning's newspaper, even though they happened over a half a century ago. We have these divisions over law enforcement. What does and does not constitute reasonable force? We can't even talk about the weather. Because then we get into these debates about global warming and climate change and how does it really affect us, and again, whether it's true. 
true or not. And then there is religion. You know, as Christians, controversy and conflict should come as no surprise to us. It was a hallmark of Jesus' own ministry, and it's something that he warned his disciples about over and over again. And he still tells us, though, even in the face of conflict and controversy, we are called, we are commissioned to go out and share that good news. He sends us out as he sent those first disciples, as we heard a couple weeks ago, like sheep into the midst of wolves. In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus sends the disciples out after giving them all these warnings, and he says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whenever I hear those words, it conjures up an image in my mind. Of course, I've always got some kind of image conjured up up there. But it conjures up this image of me, walking up to someone's door with Jesus by my side. It might be a friend, it might be a neighbor, it might be someone I've never met. Knocking on the door, and when they answer, I say, well, hello, I'd like you to meet my friend, Jesus. Then I tell them how I came to know Jesus some time ago, and how he has been a loving and loyal friend ever since, and explain to them that I would like to introduce Jesus to as many people as I possibly can. See, that's what evangelism is. That's what the evangelical Lutheran Church in America is all about, introducing others to the Jesus that we know and love and who knows and loves us. Now, I wonder if you can picture yourself in a similar scenario. Some kind of a scenario where you are introducing others to Jesus or introducing Jesus to others. I think of it as opening the door for Jesus. Do you think you know Jesus well enough to be able to introduce him to others? Do you think knowing Jesus is important enough for you to want to introduce him to others? Or might you even be just a little embarrassed to introduce Jesus as your friend? Think about what it would be like to walk around with Jesus by your side, meeting and greeting people, shaking hands, saying hello, inviting them to get to know him better, maybe even sitting on the patio, sipping iced tea, and sharing stories about your faith. You know, we are commissioned. We are sent out to share this good news of Jesus Christ. And again, Jesus says, when we do that, we will probably meet with a variety of reactions. And some of those reactions are good and some not so good. You see, we are disciples of Jesus. We are his emissaries. We are his ambassadors. We are his representatives. But more than that, we are his brothers and sisters. We are the brothers and sisters he cared enough about to die for. And so, when we present ourselves as Christians, we present ourselves in a way that implies we have this special relationship with Jesus, a relationship that allows us to introduce him as our friend, our brother, our savior. And then when others welcome Jesus by welcoming us, then they are welcoming that friend and brother and savior into their lives as well. Not everyone will receive that invitation positively. We may get a reaction like the one Jesus had been warning his disciples about throughout chapter 10 here in Matthew's Gospel. We may get the door slammed in our face. We may even get slapped in the face. You see, the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near, well, that's not good news to everyone. And again, we might get a more positive reaction. We might run into those who say, oh, great, I would love to know more. Come in, sit down, let's talk. Tell me more about your friend Jesus. And then again, we might be surprised by some who say, oh, yes, I've known Jesus for quite some time. We're close friends. Come on in and sit down and we'll share stories about our faith. 
You never know what we might learn from someone who we think, we think might be an unlikely source. Regardless of the reaction we get, the reception we receive, we are commissioned to go out and share that good news. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, just before his ascension, Jesus says, Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Something we know as the Great Commission. And just like an artist or a poet who knows the honor and the privilege of being commissioned to do a special work, we should understand the honor and the privilege of being commissioned to go out and do that special work of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Of course, we are all different. We all have different ways of opening that door. Some may go bursting in like gangbusters. Others may be a little more laid back, even timid about opening the door and approaching others about Jesus. Jesus understands those differences. And I think he shows that understanding by the way he talks about three different groups of people in this morning's gospel reading. He talks about prophets. He talks about righteous persons. And he talks about little ones. Of course, there is some debate as to exactly what Jesus meant by each of those descriptions, but there are some helpful suggestions. It has been suggested, for instance, that the prophets are those who study the Word. Those who are preachers, teachers, scholars, those who develop an intimate relationship with that written Word of God, and then through that relationship with the written Word, introduce others to the living word. Righteous persons are those who we might refer to more commonly as godly people. People who live a godly life. They share the good news by example. They share the gospel of Jesus Christ by the things they do. By truly loving their neighbor. By helping others whenever they can. And you know when we put the prophets and the godly persons together. Then we have a group that shares the good news of Jesus Christ that opens the door for Jesus in both word and deed. And that, of course, is an important part of the mission statement of this church. And then finally, Jesus talks about little ones. Now there are those who say, well, the little ones represent new Christians, those who are young in their faith. Others who think perhaps Jesus is talking literally about little children. Either way, they represent those who don't really have any particular training, no special skills, nothing that really would qualify them, we might think, as an evangelist, other than a very deep desire to share the love of God with others. They have a heart for discipleship. And perhaps welcoming those little ones may be the most important of all because Jesus says that we share even a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple our reward is great in heaven. Now I hope that you can see yourself in some scenario where you are introducing Jesus to others, where you are opening the door for others to get to know Jesus as a friend, a brother, and especially as a Savior. I'd like you to take a moment now and put yourself on the other side. Now someone knocks on your door. They say, I want to introduce you to my friend Jesus. How do you greet them? How do you welcome them if you welcome them? Do you ask them to come in? Do you ask them to talk? Do you want to hear their story? Or do you send them on their way? And either way, why do you react the way you do? You know, we may have differences of opinion when it comes to politics and pandemics and race and law enforcement and even the weather. But as Christians, there's one very important thing we should agree on. And that is sharing the love of God with others. Introducing others to our Savior, opening the door for Jesus, 
is an honor, it is a privilege, and it is our mission. Go in peace, share the good news. Amen. Keep us steadfast in our faith, 
and renew our trust in your cross. Hear us, O God. Receive these prayers, O God, of those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Each of you is a part of the body of Christ, and you were chosen to live together in peace. So let the peace that comes from Christ control your thoughts and be grateful. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We share a non contact side of the peace. Take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Please be seated. Please be seated. 